All right, what's going on guys? So I got a little bit more car content today. Um, I'm just gonna be doing a simple radio install. Um, if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to install a radio in your car, this will probably help you a lot. Um, if you don't know how to install a, must, a radio in a Mustang, this will help you a lot too. Um, just follow along with me on this. Uh, it should only take me about maybe an hour and a half, but if there's already an existing radio in the car so whether the person that had it before me did it right i've had a couple cars that they just crimped the wires together and put electrical tape over it and that sucks you know hopefully this just has like butt connectors i can cut them off and reuse the harness but i've had a truck where they soldered everything to the stock radio uh wiring harness and cut off the clip so i had to figure that out, I had to go to the junkyard, find a new clip, solder that in, and do everything. You know, it'd probably been easier for me just to re-solder everything in, but that's just, I like to do it like that so I can change radios if I want to, or if the next owner needs to change it, they can. So I'm just gonna get into this video and start getting into this radio install. So this is the radio that I picked up. Um, I wasn't wanting to spend 200, $300 on a radio just because the only thing I really wanted in this car was uh apple carplay and this radio had it and i got it on sale at walmart after the holidays for a hundred dollars and it comes with two speakers so i guess that's a pretty good deal um the only reason i got it just because it has apple carplay i was looking for a radio apple carplay for a good deal and i've looked at a couple radios on amazon and they were just a little high and some of them looked like i don't know if they're redesigning them but um, a lot of them have where there's that's a seven inch screen or bigger and it sticks out of the radio and I'm not really a fan of that I like to have it sit flush in it and this is the radio that I found it's a power acoustic it's basically a Walmart brand I mean I'm sure it's better than dual and that's the one I was looking at but this one was a hundred dollars and the other one was hundred or hundred seventy dollars so I just picked this up and then I picked up uh, just a face harness or a radio harness radio bracket kit from Walmart so this one obviously won't work because it's singled in so I'm gonna have to use this this radio does say it's compatible with different cars so it already comes with brackets where you can use it but I just bought this just in case and hopefully this car has a wiring harness for this radio and it's not soldered or wired in randomly because I'm gonna have to go back to the store, buy that, buy butt connectors, so it's gonna suck if it does, but I'm just gonna start taking those apart and see what all is in there. So I don't mind the mess in my console, but the first thing you're gonna do when you're taking this apart is there's two Phillips screws back here. You take those out, and then you wanna unclip your uh, bezel, unless you have an automatic, I think it's the same thing, there's a bezel around it, you take that off, and you lift it from the back, pull it up and you have to have your e-brake up and kind of move maneuver it around there pull it out and then you'll have these two pieces right here they'll clip out this one will clip out and then the rest of it's just taking this face plate off and we'll I'll, I'll record that one once we get there so now that we got everything off we got those two side clips they're not hard at all i mean i don't know how it is but every single car i've done a radio in a mustang you just pull them they clip out pretty easily on each side so now you have i think they're eight millimeter bolts and they look just like that and you should have six of them if i'm not mistaken yeah you have six of them take this plate off so when you're taking it off these climate control stuff down here there'll be two clips on each side and i don't know how it is with these because i have heated seat controls i don't know if that matters but you'll have two clips they're kind of hard to get to but they're not hard to get off and you need to take those off before you remove this whole plate off because it'll be stuck in there it does the wires probably are like maybe two or three inches long so you have to take those off before you remove this plate and i'm going to go ahead and do that right now so now we got all those out and these ones are the typically the two hardest ones you have your uh, ac one back here all you do is get behind here and it's it's a cord right here you just want to push down with your screwdriver and push it out from back here because you won't be able to pull it out far enough and this one is typically the hardest one because it clips on top well whoever did this one before broke it 
so it was pretty easy to get off that's why i was confused when i was trying to take it off because i was like man this doesn't look like the same plug but whoever did it before me uh broke the clip so makes it easier for me i guess and then the top one this only refers to some people that have you know factory stuff so this one had you know everything airbag hazards traction control you have the info set up and reset and uh you just unplug those when you're pulling that out the hardest one i thought was actually the cigarette lighter but all it is is when it's in there you just have to press down with your screwdriver on that little hump right there and then you'll get it all out now we're just going to take these four bolts and nuts out i can already see the wiring down here and it doesn't look like they cut or splice anything so that's a great thing so all i'm gonna have to do is unplug that uh, I guess rewired on my radio and then put it back in so it shouldn't be a hard install. I hope not Every time I say that it takes me two days to do something. So hopefully this goes uh, as planned So I'll get back to y'all once I get the radio out. I got everything out and uh, I did find this um, It's a little beat up There's some spots like it's frayed right there. I don't know if it'll focus but it, I mean, it's melting the actual butt connector. And I really don't think this is a butt connector. It looks like they just soldered it together and then put a, a tie around it or, you know, this is pretty dangerous because it was sitting on that. That's an actual amp in there, I think. Don't call me on that. I think that's the amp. But for the actual radio, if you have the Shaker 1000 or 500 system, and this is for you know, for you to run those amps. And, you know, this is the right wiring harness. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm glad I got the wiring harness. But, you know, it kind of shows you like, it, it, whoever did this, you know, just threw it in there, didn't twist time together, didn't secure them because they were just laying there. You know, this could have caught, this could have started a fire in the car. And, you know, this car sat for a little bit in this guy's garage and, um, you know, rodents can get in there and start chewing on stuff. And if you go and try to start that car up <clears throat> and it arcs off that and doesn't blow a fuse, you know, that's a fire causing habit. So, but I'm, I am glad that we have the wiring harness. So I don't have to go back to Walmart and buy something. So I already have this. I can reuse it. But yeah, all the wires are just sitting right here. And it was just sitting on that. It probably just got hot because it is, I think it's 500 watts. I can't remember. 500 i guess it's a thousand watts if it's a taker 1000 because it has 500 for the front 500 in the back but yeah this is you're running you know a thousand watts or whatever 500 watts this little bitty cord it's kind of dangerous but i mean that's that that's how ford or ford i say ford but skosh or any wiring company with radios and stuff is going to do it like this just because it's probably cheaper and easier and this is the plug you're running all that amperage through so you know if you want to get it done in an actual shop, like, I mean, you can tell how small those wires are. I mean, the amp wires are just a little tad bit bigger, but you know, if, you know, I'm on a budget a little bit with this car, but you know, I'm gonna actual wire it pretty good and wrap it around with electrical tape and then zip tie it up somewhere. But you, you know, if you buy cheap stuff, like this is a cheap radio, like I think it's a JVC, but it's really small. It doesn't have a CD player in it. And you're running that much amperage to this stuff, you know, you can cause a fire and you know just spend the extra money and have it done actual right or if you don't know how to do it you know spend the extra money and have someone do it because you you don't want to try to install a 50 dollar radio in your car and you burn your car to the ground then you don't have a car anymore you know that just doesn't make any sense if you can't afford it right now you know ask people that know how to do it like i used to know how to do this and i just asked my buddies and they've taught me how to do it and it's not hard you just connect all the wires color to color it's just color code <clears throat> so all these wires are colored to each other but stuff like this that's just sketchy you know if you don't know how to solder don't try to solder i mean some of the solder is coming out of the or the the actual uh heat wrap that they put on it i don't know if it's called heat wrap but i'm gonna stop rambling about this and go get it set up i'm gonna cut these wires off and then put them back to the other radio and then try to install it now shouldn't take me too long because it's pretty much already done I, thought, I just have to put it in that bracket put the radio in that bracket wire it to that radio and we should be good so i mean i got everything i got the antenna and everything so yeah i'll get back to you when i get that done and then we'll put the radio in and see how it sounds 
<coughs> I guess this is my helper for my radio install. Hi, Goose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I got it all fixed up and wired up. Um, I just used the old plate and bracket for that uh, other radio. I just took that little singled in thing out and it worked fine in this. So I guess I can take that other thing back. And I got all the wiring harness done, zip tied it up, made it look decent with butt connectors I had in my garage. Now I'm just gonna put it back into it and test it, see if it works. Hope it works that'd be great if it doesn't work it's gonna suck but i'm pretty sure it's gonna work so i'm just gonna hook all this stuff up um you do on this wiring harness has the wiring harness for your uh amplifier so i'm gonna figure out which one i plug it into i'm pretty sure it doesn't matter because it's just white and red white and red um but yeah the bottom one's for the camera so yeah that'll fi i'll figure it out i'll get back to y'all when i get it in there and see if it works so it did turn on power's taking a little bit okay there it goes so it did turn on and it works i'm gonna get everything plugged back up get the screen all set up <clears throat> and then uh see how it looks after this i'm i want to test it before i uh, plug it all up make sure the amps and everything work for it all right guys i just got the radio installed wasn't too bad i mean i had a few i put the bracket like this black piece around upside down on the radio and I was trying to put it in there and it wouldn't fit and I kept on getting frustrated so I just sat back for a second and thought and I had it upside down I flipped it over fit good everything works um the one thing I can't figure out and it did it on my other radio too and I thought it was just a wiring harness um and it did it in my other car too whenever you start the car up it makes a loud like boom sound like it's hitting the subs and then it's, i think it's grounding off somewhere and i've tried to look on forums and they said it's normal but like i think over time it can mess up your speakers but you know like i got it all worked out so it's doing the same thing as my other one this one has a higher amperage on it so it does make that noise a little bit louder when you start it up but other than that like it's pretty good radio you really can't tell on this camera but like the actual screen on the on the uh, radio looks really good and it has apple carplay everything that i want i really only wanted the radio because of apple carplay i'm not going to use bluetooth or anything i want to use apple carplay just because when we go on road trips like the only reason i put this in here is because we're going to must or ponies in the smokies in march and uh, i wanted my navigation on my radio and uh with having that apple carplay you can have your music and everything on there so it's already on there you don't have to use your bluetooth or anything so that's what i like about the radio um but i think this is going to be the end of my video so uh thanks guys for watching again this is just a little i bought this with my i got some christmas money for my wife's family and uh, i just wanted to buy something that i've wanted for this car since i bought it and uh it was just a little install um i'm gonna try and save up some money and start buying stuff for the car so i can have a little bit of content but uh for now that's just a little I'll, I'll say mod but it's just something that i wanted in the car i didn't necessarily need it but i wanted it for the car so i put it in here works great um i'm gonna have another video next week going over everything that i've done to my car and what i'm gonna do next and then i'm gonna have plans on buying stuff for the car and recording that so i can have some content but you know every video is not going to have a mod in it just because i don't have the money to keep on buying and buying and buying for this car but i'm going to try to make some type of content for this car you know um i've always wanted to try drifting i've watched this guy on youtube that does drifting in a mustang and it's really cool like he can actually he's done all these mods and like do really good cornering and have more uh, steering angle so i might try to do some videos with that if, <clears throat> if i can get my brother to film, film me <clears throat> but in the next videos i'm gonna have some type of mods and then uh i'm gonna start saving up money so i can actually buy some you know decent price mods for this car just because some of the stuff for these cars especially when you start doing engine wise stuff is kind of expensive one mod i really want to do and it's something that I want to do in my other car is put uh, hot rod cams in it, hot or uh, four performance hot rod cams. That's something that I really want to do to my car. 
and I want to try to do it by myself. I don't want to take it to a shop and that would be really good content. So if you like the video, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. If you uh, like watching my videos, um, I'm trying to get more comfortable with filming videos in public. I know this is just in my car so I can talk loudly, but when we went to Gatlinburg, I was kind of embarrassed. I don't know if I'm embarrassed, but like I get weird when people are walking around, I'm talking to a camera. So I'm going to try to get better at doing that, but, uh, just leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. If you want to watch more, uh, comment down below, give me ideas of videos, uh, give me ideas of what I can do to the car. That's not super expensive, but you know, reasonable in price. You know, when I say reasonable, you know, 300 or $200, you know, every cup every month or so, you know, that, that ain't, you know, that's not a big deal to me. So, uh, thanks guys. Thanks for watching.